And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Howdy folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Patchwork Christmas Edition. Uh, Patchwork Christmas Edition, uh, cookie cutter inside. This is a reworking of Patchwork, and let me, I mean Patchwork, and let me tell you this right out of the bat. It's the same thing. So if you're just looking for differences between this and Patchwork, it's Christmas themed. That's it. Uh, but you may never have played Patchwork before, and so it's been a while since I've done my review of Patchwork, and I thought, hey, this is a good chance to take a look back at this two-player game that's incredibly popular and tell you what I think about it while showing you the Christmas edition at the same time. Here we go. Each player has their own player board here with a grid on it that is nine by nine squares. And then there is one board that's placed in the middle of the table with all these pieces here, these quilt pieces placed randomly around it. There's a neutral playing piece that's placed just after the one by two square piece. Each player gets five buttons and they'll take turns. But turns in this game are not back and forth. You'll go with the person who's farthest behind. To that, it works like this. So let's say I'm first. Let's say I'm the gold player. I can pick any of the next three spaces clockwise here to move to. So I can pick this piece, this piece, or this piece. So let's say I'll take the first piece. So I just move one space to that. And I pay a certain amount of buttons to buy this piece, which I couldn't even take this piece because it costs 10 buttons. But this one I can happily take because it costs 5 buttons. So I pay 5 buttons to the bank, and then I can put this piece somewhere on my board. It also shows five time units, which means I need to move one, two, three, four, five on here. If I ever land on a present piece when moving your piece on here, you can add that. It's a nice single piece to fit on the spots. And whenever you pass a button, you're going to get income equal to the number of buttons. Well, hooray! I have two buttons here, so I'll get an income of two buttons. Now, the next person to go is Silver. So let's say Silver decides that they're going to take this piece here, one, two. This one also costs five buttons, but it only costs three time. So they move one, two, three. Since they're behind me as a Silver piece and the Gold piece, they get to go again. If they only went one time, you know, they could go again. And you can keep going until you're in the lead. However, Silver at this point would be out. They spent all five of theirs to buy this single piece. They have no buttons. So another thing you can do, instead of taking pieces, you can move in front of the opposing piece. So however far they are ahead, you can move in front of them, taking a button for each space that you moved. So that's a way to get buttons. So if someone's far ahead, you might zoom up there and get some buttons, but you are also giving up some actions that you can take. As more and more pieces get pulled out of the grid, as people take them, the grid's going to get smaller, and you just ignore those pieces. And your players are going to keep going until both pieces get here into the middle. If at any point someone builds a perfectly filled-in 7x7 seven seven square, the first person to do that, if it even happens over the game, will get this token, which is just worth 7 buttons. That is going to be added to the buttons you've earned over the course of the game. And you will then subtract at the end of the game two points for each empty space still on your quilt. Whoever has the most points is the winner. The Christmas pieces are really pretty. And in fact, I prefer this to regular Patrick just because I like the Christmas atmosphere of everything. It's literally the same game with just those changed that you have silver and gold and that the neutral piece here is a Christmas tree. And... Oddly enough, there's a cookie cutter that's thrown into the mix. So you can make your own Tetris shapes. That's kind of cool. Not necessary for the game, but it's a cool addition to it. Um, and even the background for the boards, you can see this one is gold, and the one I'm holding in my hand is silver. Nice quality components. Now, in the past, many times in top 100 lists and more, the patchwork has shown up that people have really enjoyed it. And I always kind of cocked one eye because I do like the game. I want to be clear, I enjoy Patchwork and I thought, why do people like this game so much? It's a polyomino game and there's so many of those out there now. This is certainly one of the first and this one's also exclusively two player. But 
It's more than the polyomino part of it. Yes, there's that whole part of try to fill up your board as much as possible. But it's a button time economy here. You have two currencies, buttons and time. Buttons are essentially points. Time is essentially how many turns you get to take. And it's very cleverly done. Yes, there are con some constraints in the system. There's only so many pieces that you can pick. You know, you're stuck with the next three, and sometimes it just doesn't work out, or you're forced to move your thing ahead and get some more buttons. But deciding on which of these pieces to buy, it's good to buy pieces with buttons on them so that you have a better economy as the game goes by, but those pieces are more expensive. Some pieces are nice and big, but don't give any button income, and so you have to figure out how to balance that to some degree. This does is not made very complicated because I said even though you have a small realm of choices of only the next three tiles, that's also really good for people jumping into this game for the first time because hey, I'm just picking one of these, I have four choices. One of these three pieces or move my piece and take buttons. That's it. That's a good choice. I like it. I like the whole concept of the game and it comes together. I don't know that I'll love it as much as some people do, but I think it's a solid two-player game. And like I said, the Christmas edition is one that I think is very enjoyable. This is, uh, it just has a good look to it. The whole patchwork thing looks good anyway. I don't actually want a quilt made of patches because I find them not to be very comfortable things, but they certainly look pretty. And building one of these, it's weird how a bunch of different oddly colored patches can produce a beautiful thing, and I feel like there's some metaphor I should be making right now. But this game does come together, and unlike a patchwork quilt, it's just a few tightly wound mechanisms that have survived this long, and I suspect will do well in the future. Yes, you don't need to own this one. There are the Americana one and the regular one. You just need to own one. But going by the prettiness of this edition, it's the one I would choose. I'm Tom Vassell. We'll see you next time. Dice Tower Judgment approved. <laughs>